Good morning and welcome to the house of the Lord. Good morning. It is a good and joyful thing when we can be gathered together to worship God. This is what it means to be the body of Christ. And it's important that we do this together because it lifts each other up. And you might think wherever you are here or at home when we have this time, you might think, oh, if I miss it, I'm, I'm not needing lifting up. But there may be something about your presence with us. You're sharing online in the, in the um, chat of Facebook. It could be that what you say, just your very presence, or that thing that you share about the, the music or the, or the message or the children's moment or the this or the that, it is that bit that someone else needed. Because that's the thing. We are here for one another. We're, we're supported by the Holy Spirit for this life together. And that is what part of what we celebrate is how God is with us, among us, helping us to be here for one another. And so all God's people said, amen. amen. And so we do have some announcements of, of our life together. And originally, this Sunday, this, no, this is Sunday, this Wednesday, was going to be our last Wednesday night dinner for the summer. Carolyn Presnell is taking a much deserved break. But, and, we had um, a couple in the church who come to Wednesday night dinners, the Hattos, who said, but what if we didn't break? And I said, Okay, and they said they would coordinate it. So, um, we are continuing with dinners for the summer, and at some point there will be a sign-up sheet to help out with that if you would like to. And so we will continue to have Wednesday night dinners over the summer. That people are coming and going during this time, and but if you are available, it will be there. And so we're excited about that, and we're thankful um, to the Hattos for doing that. We're also very thankful to Carolyn and everyone else who has made Wednesday night dinners, not just this year, but in all the past years possible. So um, Carolyn is not, she might wind up with us in a couple minutes, but she's not here right now, but we are thankful to Carolyn and, um, and all God's people said, amen. amen. And so that is one of the things that's, um, we wanted to lift up. There's other things that are coming up in the future. We are at nearing the end of our month for eyeglasses for the Lions Club, but I am pretty sure that if you bring in eyeglasses, we will make sure that probably the box will still be here, and we will make sure that they get where they need to go to help those who um, it, they're able to see. And we are thankful for that. It gives them this opportunity to see, to have the glasses, to have the lenses. Um, they match those things up. I don't know how they do it, but they do, and that's what matters. And so there are a lot of um, different announcements. We hope that you will take a look at those. And then also, um, if you want to, it's just this little weirdness of really it's something that I like to do because I was grew up in a church that liked to do it. If you want to wear red next Sunday for Pentecost, you are invited to wear red for Pentecost. The color of flame, red, is the color for the Holy Spirit. And so if you're invited to do that, you don't have to. Nobody's going to like pinch you or anything if you don't, but you're invited to. I, I know, that was the illusion, <laughs> St. Patrick's Day. Um, and now we do, what am I reminding people of? Thank you. 
Okay, and for those um, who might have had difficulty um, hearing, so there is food on the front porch, and it's in coolers, and there's even a big old turkey, and um, but there's other things as well. Also, Kathy said, if you or you know someone who needs food during the summer, call her, and they'll set it. Y'all can set it up so that you can get food so that no one goes hungry. Yes, we have other ways of. Of there, there are other things in our community, but sometimes um, it ju that just doesn't work. And so this is a way to make sure. And so we're thankful to Kathy for the way that she um, um, uses her gifts. And so those are our announcements. And now we have a ministry moment. Our priority is to ensure that no child dies from a preventable cause. So we target priority causes of death in under five children and uh, in adolescent. And globally, those are birth complications, uh, infectious diseases like malaria, diarrhea, pneumonia, that are the priority areas that we target. So our activities have a broad scope. We work in malaria control, HIV, um, maternal and child health, ensuring that there are birthing facilities and babies are born without complications, ensuring that there's appropriate nutrition for children, health system strengthening, training of health care workers, and equipping facilities to de deliver uh, services and substance abuse prevention. Obesity predisposes children to heart disease, diabetes, cancers, and things like that. So we're encouraging healthier nutrition for children, increased physical activity, helping to support mental health promotion, and substance abuse prevention. Uh, and these are activities that we encourage the church to participate in at the church level, at the family level, and at the community level. continue our worship together as we hear a beautiful prelude and bring the light of Christ into worship.
What a friend we have in Jesus. That was beautiful, Miss Sylvia. Will you pray with me, please? Heavenly Father, settle our hearts, prepare our minds and souls, ready us for what is to come. Lord, help us put aside anxiety, help us put aside worry, help us put aside doubt and fear. None of that will add a single day to our lives. You know the best path for us. You have the best plan for us. Lord, help us to understand that and fill us with the Holy Spirit as we set our sights on you. In your most holy and precious name we pray. Amen. Will you stand for the call to worship and remain standing for the first praise anthem this morning? Soar we now where Christ has led, following our exalted head. May like him, like him we rise, ours the cross, the grave, the skies. Hail the Lord of he earth and heaven, praise to thee by both be given. Thee we greet triumphant now, hail the resurrection thou. King of glory, soul of bliss, Everlasting life is this. Thee to know that power to prove, thus to sing and thus to love. New life on earth is continued above.
God's people said? I had half a battery, so I was trying to save the battery by using the... It is Ascension Sunday. And you may have noticed we have been in Easter tide or the season after Easter, and we've, we've had our white um, because the, the colors for Christ are white and gold. And I, I could have worn this side, but the butterflies, the butterflies, resurrection, my friends. And today we, are, we started last week, and we're finishing this week in talking about when Jesus ascended to be with God his Father. And do you want to have something that's both easy and hard to talk with children about? Ascension Sunday. <laughs> because on the one hand, children haven't been worn down by all of the, the empiricism and, and, and if you, you have to, we know how things work, right? There's this thing called gravity. And so gravity means that people stay on the earth. We don't float out into space. And yet here we go telling this story about Jesus ascends to be with the Father. Do we fully understand exactly how that happened? Not even close. But what we know is that Jesus ascended to be with his Father and when he had been warning his disciples about it, and they had been not wanting to hear this, he said, this has to happen. This has to happen. Not only do I have to die and rise, I must then ascend. I have to go, go away so that the Holy Spirit will come in a special way. And so Ascension Sunday is actually a really important time because while it would be lovely if we got to have Jesus fully entered into history as he did 2,000 years ago, still with us right here, right here, or right there, or right there, if we did, one, it would be putting our desires and our limits on God, which is never, my friends, really, it's never a good idea. Because God is so much bigger, and God's plans are so much bigger. And so we are thankful for the ascension. We may not fully understand it. Maybe you do. I don't. But it doesn't matter, because God does. Our triune God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit does. And from this, our celebration of this day, we get to wear red next Sunday, and we get Pentecost. And so let us pray. Please repeat after me. Dear God, thank you so much for loving me and always being with me always being with me. Thank you for your son Jesus. Thank you for your son Jesus. Who shows me how to love others. Who shows me how to love others. And sent your Holy Spirit. And sent your Holy Spirit. To be with me. To be with me. And all of us. And all of us. In a very special way. In a very special way. Thank you. Thank you. I love you. I love you. In the name of Jesus Christ, all God's people said. Amen. And now, if you would please stand and join with me as we join in the affirmation of faith. Please stand as you are able. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, 
born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and buried. On the third day he arose from the dead, ascended into heaven, and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Amen.
people said. Amen. Amen. Let us share together in a time of prayer, prayer both of thanksgiving and prayers of concerns. And so it is with joy that we share that Jerry Barber is home. Um, he's got a little time before he'll be back in church with us, but, um, but uh, Jerry and Pat's son, John, is heading back um, out of town after being here, and so Pat uh, is staying home this morning, but I get a chance to visit with them tomorrow, and you know that I will be taking all of your love with me when, when we get a chance to visit. And so, um, who are the others that we would be lifting up in prayer? Obviously, we have a, a prayer list that is often ongoing. Yes, Miss Carol. Okay, so your son Scott is having some tests, and Livonia Hutto, who is um, Linda Hutto's sister-in-law, John's um, sister-in-law also, right? Okay, so, so we're keeping Livonia in prayer, and we're keeping Scott in prayer, and Livonia's in the hospital. So thank you, Carol. Um, as a joy, when I first got here, I heard some people's names and people who've been on our prayer list but the two Beverly's, that's how I thought of y'all actually, was the two Beverly's at first. And then also, Miss Carol, it is lovely to see you in church this morning. And, and yes, there are others, it just struck me this morning. Um, and we are always excited when folks can join us, but we also know though, there are those who, who are not able to, and we know that you are with us, um, you're watching and you are part of us we are our church family is bigger than we think it stretches into um, sometimes into other states and places and that is an exciting thing that we are able to do which COVID forced upon us but we do look for the ways in which we can even in the midst of troubles be strengthened and this is a, it's hard to say gift of COVID, but one of the things that did happen was we became more connected if we will utilize these things. And so we seek to do a better job of that. Um, and it's, it's, a, it's a growing edge. And so um, however we get to be together, it is a joy. Are there any other Joys and concerns. Yes, ma'am. Yes. Riza for salvation, who we've been we've been keeping Riza in prayer. And so for his salvation. Yes, ma'am. Yes. Um, earlier we had been in prayer for another one of the teachers from FMS and um, her family. And now um, Miss Kristen King has her mother has passed away. And so we need to keep the um, her family she has she has multiple siblings and this is a, a hard time and we are um, we have made ourselves available as a church family if they need us and so we are just surrounding her and hers her family in love and the good news is they've got I think like three or four churches that are surrounding them in love because everybody had church families and we are and so that's also what it means to be the body of Christ together and any others? Yes, ma'am, Ms. Shirley. I'm sorry, Ms. Shirley. So please keep Ms. Shirley's family in prayer. They lost her brother in a bad motorcycle accident. And now let us, oops, I'm sorry, yes. Yes, ma'am. So, Patty Sackery's daughter, Pat Schaefer, passed away. So we need to keep the family in prayer. Thank you. Let us pray. Dear God, we thank you for all the ways that you are with us and for the minds that you give us to think of ways so that we can be better with one another. 
And we thank you for your Son, Jesus Christ, through whom all things are possible, even our salvation, the forgiveness of sins, that we might have eternal life with you, resurrected life that starts now, and to be strengthened in this resurrected new life that has already begun when we accept your Son into our hearts. We thank you for your Holy Spirit helping us to be strong and have good heart and filled with courage and compassion and mercy. We thank you for all these things. We thank you for your great and glorious love for us. And we thank you that we can come together even in our concerns not to wonder whether or not you are there, but knowing that you are with us and knowing that you are with all your children as we bring forward all these whom are upon our hearts. They're already on your heart, dear God, because your love is bigger than we can imagine. And yet, you say you want to hear what we have to say and think and to know what's on our hearts even though you know because in this time together in this lifting up together we are reminded of who and whose we are and in these moments we are strengthened and in these moments others are strengthened and so dear God we lift up each and every person on our prayer list, who we have said out loud or in our hearts. And dear God, we ask your Holy Spirit to be poured out, not just on those mentioned, not just on us gathered here, but on each and every one of your children, so that they will have wholeness of life, healing of mind, body, and spirit that is only fully possible through you and through your Son, Jesus Christ. We ask this with joy and thanksgiving and trust as we pray together the prayer that your Son, our Savior, taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. And now. Let us read from Acts 1. 9 through 14. Oh. No. Oh. See, we've been moving stuff around. Yeah, well, you're supposed to be there. Yeah, we've been moving stuff around. So let us, um, I'll say a prayer over, you know what? Let us stand and join together in the doxology. <laughs> working on some ways to um, have an, a, a good flow to the service and we're it's still new I apologize 
you will notice before we get into reading the scripture, you will notice that there was also, I'm now on, uh, I'm now on this. You will notice that um, we had an insert in the bulletin. And, whew, all those thank yous. These are from folks around the world that this church family has had an impact on. And that is possible because of the Holy Spirit at work in and through us. This is, this is God's work. And so we have the picture of the generator um, in Cuba. This is the blessing of the generator in Cuba. And you will see there's some pictures that, um, that Michelle Bravo, who um, she sounds like an action figure, doesn't she? Michelle Bravo. Um, she's a young adult who helped in uh, Argentina. She actually was a young adult missional movement person here. She came up. We were doing an exchange of young adults. And she came and was over in the Dunedin area um, serving. And she is a translator for us when we go down to visit. And Michelle sent us pictures that you have in your insert of the feeding ministry. And Michelle is 24, 25, and she is, her, her mom is on the church council, but Michelle is the one that oversees this feeding ministry. And it's, she's been doing it for a while now. So this also is what we are in the body of Christ. So a um, little different than what Kathy does, but it is, it is a making sure that people's needs, and needs are met. And they have this wonderful time together. You can see some pictures. Sometimes somebody has a guitar, and they'll, um, while they're eating, they will sing songs together. It's really interesting. And so we also had a, a thank you from uh, Katela Katembo in um, Angola. And you can read that. And his, his letting us know that when we give a gift there, what, what good it does. And also in Mendoza, Argentina, when we, when we helped with Pastor Doug's um, travel, there was a little bit extra money between all the churches. And so that went, some of it went to help with the First Methodist theirs in Mendoza's feeding program, but also then some of it went to, and some of, there was some from another church that was earmarked for the uh, Albert Schweitzer School. And so these are all ways that we are there for one another. And so this brings us to Ascension Sunday. And last week was actually Ascension Sunday part one, ready. And today is Ascension Sunday part two, set. So here are these words from Acts 1, 9 through 14. So after he said this, which what he said was, wait in Jerusalem and there's going to be power that's going to come on high from the Holy Spirit so that you can witness in Jerusalem, Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth, right? Witness to Christ. And so then after he said this, he was taken up before their very eyes and a cloud hid him from their sight. They were looking intently up into the sky as he was going, when suddenly two men dressed in white stood beside them. Men of Galilee, they said, why do you stand here looking into the sky? This same Jesus who has been taken from you into heaven will come back in the same way you have seen him go into heaven. Then the apostles returned to Jerusalem from the hill called the Mount of Olives, a Sabbath day's walk from the city. When they arrived, they went upstairs to the room where they were staying. Those present were Peter, John, James, and Andrew, Philip, and Thomas, Bartholomew, and Matthew, James, son of Alphaeus, and Simon the Zealot, and Judas, son of James. They all joined together constantly in prayer, along with the women and Mary, the mother of Jesus, and with his brothers. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Dear God, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be pleasing to you and life-changing for us. O oh Lord, our God, our rock, and our redeemer, and all God's people said, Amen. 
And so, some of you know that I have a, a sermon prep group that uh, we meet via Zoom on Mondays. And one of the members of the group is a um, former lawyer. And sometimes I swan, she just asked questions to mess with me. Um, and, and, but she said, why is Ascension Sunday, why is this, the Ascension important? And I was very proud of myself because I'd recently really been thinking about it. And, and there's a group of us, but it, I don't know if I'm just the one who feels like the, fir the need to answer first, or I, th I feel like she zeroes in on me. Beth, if you're watching, yeah, I know. Um, she's not watching. She's, she's preaching right now. Um, but why is the ascension important? And we started to talk about it in the children's moment. It's important because without the ascension, yes, the Holy Spirit of God from the very first verse of the Bible, the Spirit of God, the breath of God, was hovering over the face of the deep, brooding over the face of the deep. We have this beautiful language of that, yes. But there's something about when Jesus says, you're going to have an advocate. And the way in which the Holy Spirit, and by the way, poured out on all people, Whereas before we sort of hear more about the judges or the prophets or this, it feels like there's something more happening here. And when we accept Christ into our hearts, along with that, our triune God, the Holy Spirit of God, is entering and moving in a way that is beautiful and different. And so... When Jesus says, I'm going, I'm, you know, I'm going to prepare a place for you, Jesus talks about that. But he also then talks about in John 14, let me double check, I made notes, 16, John 16, 7, he talks about leaving them in John 14. In John 16, 7, that is where he says, I have to go. You want me to go, oh, nice job, well. Very truly, I tell you, it is for your good that I'm going away. Unless I go away, the advocate will not come to you. But if I go, I will send him to you. And so that's why the ascension is important. Because our God who entered history and set up his tent to dwell among us, if Jesus had stayed in that way, if God had stayed with us in that way amongst the many ways that God is, the way the Holy Spirit is with us in this special, amazing way would not have been as fully possible. That's what Jesus says. And so it means that we have to believe without seeing. Unlike Thomas and all the other disciples who got to see Jesus and believe. We have to believe without seeing. But remember what else we've been talking about all along here? We actually get to see Christ all the time. Because in accepting Christ into our hearts... The Holy Spirit is moving, and we have the eyes to see and the ears to hear, and therefore also the hearts to love, and the hands and feet to be Christ in the world. And so, not only do we get to see Christ in one another, we get to be Christ to others. This is that witnessing, to be a witness thing that we talk about, that we keep on bringing up again and again and again. Not only did Christ not leave us abandoned, Christ is with us. We're two or more gathered. When we do things in his name, 
when our hearts are moved by the Holy Spirit, this is the beautiful thing. People get to see Christ in us. And we get to see Christ in others. Now here, in this time and place, it's easy. Because we can look around and we can go, bless you. We can go, yes. I remember, I remember when so-and-so said that to me, or so-and-so gave me a hug, or so-and-so handed me that card, or they, gave me, they called me, or they visited me, or this, or that. And that was Christ in them that I saw. That does not mean there's is a both and to this. Because if we're not careful, we can sort of say, well, if I don't feel really moved to do something, then I don't have to because I should be it should be almost a compulsion that the Holy Spirit's making me do something. And if it's not, then I don't have to because it's not really about me. Because it kind of isn't about us. It's about loving others. But, oh wait. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, whoever believes in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. Not to condemn the world, but save the world through him. But that means you. Christ died for you while you were yet sinners. Me, while I was yet a sinner. So actually, in the same way that it is really important that we are Christ to others, our lives are important to Christ. The way you live out Christ is important. And when we fail to live out Christ, we are loved. And when we recognize this and ask for forgiveness, we will be forgiven. And we will be empowered to be a witness. Now, in our church, we've been coming out of COVID. I mean, everybody's been coming out of COVID. Some people have been coming out of it for longer than others. And many of us are still being careful and some of us have a new, I hate new normal, but um, there are times and places where I'm just going to put on a mask. I am now over the half century mark. And um, I think about that. I have a lot to do. I do not want to be slowed down by something that if I... And so, like Miss Dorothy, who wears her mask sometimes when the pollen count is high, I'm, I'm going to start following your, your example, because these allergies are not getting better. And then the next thing you know, you got a sinus infection, and then you get pneumonia, blah, blah, blah. The point is, because there is a point somewhere in there. <laughs> the point is, that <laughs> I'm so sorry. <laughs> oh, yeah, okay. The point is, <laughs> I'm sorry. So the point is we're coming out of COVID and everything, we've been starting so much stuff up. And those of us who have been really in the trenches on that and coming into it also and adding to it, we've got so many ideas. The Holy Spirit is working. And, and each and every one of you in different ways, al almost every one of you has come to me and said, what about this? What about this? What about that? The pleaser in me is like, yay. I don't know how we're going to do it all. And that's the importance of today's message. Last week was ready. We talked about the empowering of the Holy Spirit, which we've been talking about a lot lately. Today is set. Because there's been so much stirring of the Holy Spirit. But what did Jesus say? Go to Jerusalem and wait. Now, and bless the, 
I, I really I have to do this because this is my favorite thing about this reading for Ascension Sunday. You, you can picture it, right? That Jesus up into a cloud and they're all standing, the disciples are all going. And I just sort of picture the gentleman in white going, oh, hi. Because it's, that must have been amazing. But that is not the point. Yes, Jesus ascending is part of the fact that he's the son of God, God with us. So there's, there's a point to that. But now we don't stand here just going, ooh. Now we get set. We've been told. We know what to expect. And we know what to expect because we are not only an Easter people, but we are also a Pentecost people. And so, but part of that is discernment. This, I loved the language that Heath used of settle, it, let us settle in into your presence. Because there is, we need to be paying attention. And there's all these ways that the Holy Spirit is calling us and guiding us. But we need to be listening to that guidance part to discern. Because... As many people as there are in this sanctuary and listening and watching at home or wherever, there are that many ways that people are hearing and wanting to respond to the Holy Spirit. And so one of the things we do as the church, as the body of Christ, is we discern, and one of my responsibilities as pastor is to listen and discern to see how those what are the the streams what is the movement of the holy spirit and how do these things work together so that we can find the ways for the body to be working together for this little branch to be doing this stuff and this little branch to be doing this stuff so that fruit will be born and it's that uh, this is the hard part. Sometimes we talk about the pruning often in personal lives, that we have to prune things in our personal lives so that we can grow stronger in Christ. But also the discernment, time of discernment, is also a pruning within a church life. I don't have, by the way, there's nothing in my mind right now that I'm going, yeah, that's getting pruned. Just so you know that that's not what this is about. But that's what happens is that we discern together and we find that there are certain areas that God is really calling a congregation of an iteration of the body of Christ so that we will together, because remember, we are given the spiritual gifts for the common good, for the uplifting of the body of Christ so that we can be Christ in the world. And so that is part of this preparing this getting ready, this getting set for how God is calling us into the future. So, our challenge, and I, ooh, I don't normally do the challenge thing, but I'm challenging this week. Our challenge is to be in prayer this week and next week, especially. We're going into the summer. And in some ways, there's some, some things that we're doing where we're, we're slowing down a little bit. Not a whole lot, because Vacation Bible School, my friends, is only a little over, huh, a month and like three days away. So we're not slowing down a whole lot, but a little bit. We're doing things a little different, and then we'll start back up. But here's the thing. Summer is a time of discernment. It is a time of getting set making sure that our roots are deep so that we can then be ready to grow. It's already happening. So please, be in prayer. Ask God what is next or what, what, what do you, what, what is the, the, the strength Maybe it's something we're already doing. Maybe it's something that 
Maybe we talked about in our planning. Maybe there's something new. Be in prayer. Because our prayers together, God is hearing them. And God is responding. And the Holy Spirit will be moving and doors will open or doors will close. And a window will open or a trap door in the floor. But there will be, there may be some closing. There may be some opening. But this is what it means to get set. Because we got a lot of going to do. And all God's people said, Amen. And now, please stand as you are able and let us sing together, Here I Am, Lord. It's number 593.
please remain standing for our final praise anthem this morning. So graduation for Fort Meade was yesterday morning. I may have done the, an impromptu, unprepared solo on the national anthem when the band started playing. That was not expected. And it's always bittersweet to say goodbye to my seniors. This year I had a really great group. My fifth period, 17 students, 16 boys. It was testosterone city all year. And they were all hyper competitive. They were trash talking about anything. But it was the first time that that experience that I had such a slanted group. But all year long, it's been a running joke that they wanted me to give them a hug. And it's like, graduation. I will give you a hug at graduation. And on that morning, we had them in the gym. We were going to line them up to march them onto the field. And Jaden Daniels came up to me. Jaden was a running back for us. Jaden is a bristling young man. And it's like, I want a hug. It's like, mm -hmm. I will give you a hug, Jaden. Mm -hmm. It's like, he, you would think that he's this beast of a young man. And that heart of his was like, it was so, so tender. Which, this next song, there is a segue. I have a point. That Jesus, I mean, in some ways, he is this lion. He is roaring with this power inside of him. And yet, in the same way, he's as gentle as a lamb. And so I invite you to sing with all your heart, Lion and the Lamb.
benediction. Go in peace in the love of God, the strength and grace of Christ and the movement and discerning wisdom of the Holy Spirit. Go be Christ to others because Christ is alive in you and go in peace. And all God's people said,